Hey guys, so today I wanted to just post a video um, giving you a bit of an update on what we're sewing this week. Um, but I also want to get into what I direct sew, what I sew, um, what I seed inside early, um, and some of the nuances there for a northern Alberta garden. Uh, we have a very short season. Um, well, I mean, relatively short season. For us, uh, we have an average of a 90 day season. That can go anywhere from the, the averages are from June 1st to 10th to September 1st to 10th. Now, uh, we're in a bit of a pocket here um, where I'm at. We've got some uh, rolling hills um, on that side of our community and there's a river going that way. And so uh, there's a bit of a pocket here where we get a, a particularly mild climate um, in the spring and fall. We do get really cold winters where um, zone two, although sometimes the seed car, uh, seed catalogs will tell me that I'm in zone zero. Um, so nobody's quite sure what we're at here. But we do have a bit of a microclimate, which means our frost can sometimes be a little bit um, less intense in the spring and fall than some of the surrounding communities. So if you're confused about, about how that works, uh, that's why uh, I sew for a May 20th last frost. So I guess the thing is, when I was growing up, we always used to sew for a May 20th last frost date um, or for a May 20th seeding date. And it was usually May long weekend and the whole family would get together and we'd you know, sew all the potatoes and the boys would dig holes for, for miles, <laughs> it seemed like anyway. Uh, and we'd sow these big gardens. I come from a big gardening community um, and a community with large families where there's a lot of mouths to feed. So gardens are big um, and where I'm, from where I'm from and our family's history. And so that, that May 20th sewing date doesn't comprise everything that I do now. Um, I sew a lot more based on, first of all, is there a frost in the forecast or is the forecast reliably above four degrees overnight? That's sort of, if I look at the forecast and there's nothing under, under four degrees, then I consider that my, um, my sign that I can probably go ahead and start seed or uh, start sowing things outside. There are some things that you can sow into cold soil and they will germinate fine eventually once, once they are at the right temperature. I do prefer using a seed thermometer, or not a seed thermometer, a soil thermometer that tells me um, when the soil is warm enough for certain seeds to germinate. Um, and that helps me a lot in being able to stagger as I sow, because if I sow everything at once, I'm going to be burnt out for a week. So I tend to measure the soil temperature and once it hits four, I can start sowing uh, carrots and lettuce. Um, lettuce tends to germinate a little bit better around 10 degrees, so you can sort of stagger that. Uh, and then your hot weather crops prefer 18 to 22 generally soil temperature. So those can wait a lot longer or I will start those inside so that they get the germination at the temperature that they want and they will continue to grow in a cooler temperature as long as they're sufficiently hardened off. So I'm going to get into this list that I've made. What do I grow? Uh, what do I start ahead of time indoors? And again, it's a lot of um, hot, season, uh, hot, hot weather crops like tomatoes and peppers and melons. Um, tomatoes, I usually start end of March, beginning of April, um, and I will not plant them out on May 20th unless there is a guarantee that, this, that, the, that there's no frost coming. Um, and even then I'm prepared to go out with uh, frost blankets to cover them for night if necessary, if a frost comes out of nowhere. So I'll generally expect to plant tomatoes and peppers, uh, melons, um, any pumpkins that I might start inside, any cucumbers, any of the hot season crops, I will uh, transplant them out later than I will sow the rest of the garden um, just to prevent uh, a severe transplant shock. So generally I aim for about June 10th or June 1st to 10th for transplanting those things. But again, it's very dependent on the soil temperature and the weather. 
So yes, tomatoes, peppers, melons, I all start inside. Tomatoes, April 1st-ish. Peppers, um, usually the first or second week in March. I think I started mine on the 15th this year. You can see them back here. They're just sprouting up nice and tall now. Uh, I will be starting my peppers, or my tomatoes this, this weekend. Um, and my peppers have all germinated, so my heat mat is free. I only have the one heat mat, and I stagger things so that I don't need more than that. Yeah, so the peppers have germinated, then I'll plant my tomatoes afterwards. Um, melons, I'll only start maybe four weeks before my expected last frost date, uh, because I don't want them to get too big and too um, leggy before I can transplant them out. They, uh, the bigger they are, the harder they're going to shock um, when they go outside. For other things that I start inside, they're not necessarily hot season crops, but they just can be very long season crops. So um, a lot of my brassicas, I will start um, at least one wave inside. Uh, and what I intend to do this year is I'll be starting brassicas I think this weekend possibly. So I'll be starting some cabbage, some Brussels sprouts, um, cauliflower and broccolini. And then in, so it, we're at about eight weeks before. Yeah, two months. So eight weeks before um, last frost, I'll do one sowing of those. And then four weeks before last frost, I'll do a second sowing so that I get a staggered harvest. Um, and that way, if the older ones shock too hard and they don't really do anything in the garden, I'm not totally at a loss. And I can also direct sow some of the quicker growing ones. Um, for cabbages, for me, I've never had luck direct sowing cabbages. We just have such a short season. They tend not to um, bulk up sufficiently. So I do try to grow most of those indoors and transplant them out. Um, kale is one that I wouldn't generally bother um, transplanting necessarily. You can um, start some, maybe one or two inside and then direct sow the rest. Um, and I sort of stagger my harvest like that. Uh, onions and leeks I start indoors because they take such a long time to get established from seed. Um, and my onions and leeks are doing really well. They will be big enough by the time that they go outside and the days get long enough and it won't take too long before um, they're long enough that they'll start to bulb up, but I want them to have a really healthy, strong root system before they get to that point. So that's why I start them ahead of time so early. Um, I will start some lettuce indoors. Some of it I've been um, starting just to eat inside during the winter. And anything that's still looking healthy by the time, it, by the time we are not expecting frosts below about minus four, I'll put my lettuce outside as well. And lettuce can handle a pretty good frost, so I can put them out quite early and then I'll direct sow some and uh, sort of stagger my lettuces that way. Uh, I have started artichokes indoors. I haven't grown artichokes in the past, but I will be doing that this year. And one of the reasons you need to start them indoors if you live in a very cold winter area is that they need a cold period in order to produce a flower because they're biennial. And of course you harvest the flower bud. So I need to start it early enough in advance so that it is big, uh, it's, a, it's a nice, healthy, strong sized plant. Then I can put it out in the spring before the frosts have quit so it gets a cool period for a certain amount of time. I might attempt to put, um, I've got four. So I might put two of them outside for that springtime to get that cooling um, period. I think they need at least 10 days in a cool temperature. So I think I'm going to put two outside and two in my mini fridge downstairs and see um, if some of them do better than others. If that uh, consistent temperature is better than a vacillating warm cold temperature. So that's an experiment I'll be doing. Um, I have started asparagus this year inside from seed. Uh, if you are purchasing asparagus roots, you just plant them directly in the ground. Once you can dig the ground, of course. Um, and I do also sometimes start popcorn and meal corn or um, flour corn, corn for corn flour, um, inside because they do have a very long season and if you can get a head start on them 
and you wait to transplant them until the soil is warm enough and the air is warm enough that they don't shock, um, you can get a really good head start on them by starting them inside, but again, that would only be a maximum of four weeks before your last frost. As for direct sowing, I will always direct sow my carrots. Carrots you can sow as soon as the ground is malleable. They won't come up immediately, but they will come up when they're ready. Um, potatoes, I wait until there's no hard frost coming. Uh, I want the soil to be fairly warm. I think I'm looking at about 10 degrees at least. Uh, and I chit out my potatoes in advance. So I let them sit in a bright place to make really dense, short green eyes and that'll help them to sprout faster once they're in the soil. Corn, uh, I only sow once the temperature is warm enough in the soil and I'm usually waiting for at least 18 degrees with corn because they will not germinate well in cold soil. I do have a variety called espresso that has excellent cold soil vigor and so if the soil is warm, um, that's good. If the soil is a bit cooler, this one will still do all right, but corn will always do better in a warmer soil. So it's good to know um, what the soil temperature is. And the raised beds where I live, the raised beds give me probably a week early that I can sow because raising the beds exposes the uh, soil to warmer sunshine from all the sides, you know, to allow it to warm up more quickly than the actual flat surface packed ground. Um, and so because I have raised beds, I can sow a little bit earlier, my soil warms up more quickly. Uh, peas, I direct sow as soon as your soil temperature is above, I think, seven. Uh, beans need a warmer soil. If they are planted in a cool soil, and especially if they are planted in a cool, wet soil, they will not germinate well. They will, the seed will rot before it germinates. Um, and so for those, I wait for it to be a little bit warmer, and I make sure that my soil is not too soaking wet. Uh, spinach I direct sow because every time I've tried to start spinach inside and transplant it out, it always goes immediately to seed. So I will direct sow spinach in the spring, uh, in early spring, as soon as the soil is malleable. Um, and then as soon as that has sort of started to go over, I won't reseed it until maybe August when the sun starts um, not coming quite so high and for quite so long. So once once things are cooling off a little bit, then I'll reseed, but I won't try and grow through spinach through the middle of summer. It just tends to not be a worthwhile endeavor. For most of my pumpkins, zucchinis, squash, gourds, uh, most of that I will uh, direct sow as soon as the soil is warm enough. Now, there are some exceptions. Um, some of them have a poor germination rate direct sown in my experience, uh, especially things like pepitas, which is a pumpkin with a naked seed, um, because they lack that really hard outer shell, they are much more prone to rotting if the soil is cold and wet. And so I have started those very successfully indoors and transplanted them out. If I'm going to transplant zucchini or pumpkins or squash, I will prefer to always cover them um, with a shade cloth or with a frost blanket or you know a, a row cover something um, because if they get really bad transplant shock, they very rarely recover enough to actually produce fruit. So I will prefer to direct sow and highly, highly recommend covering anything that you do transplant out. I also will direct sow beets, but I have um, started beets indoors as well. Um, so I'll probably start one, one batch of beets uh, inside and just transplant them as quite small plants. So again, for two to four weeks before your last frost to have quite small plants so that the roots aren't too um, stifled by being grown indoors. So I'll direct sow as well and that way I get some early and a little bit later and you can stagger your harvest like that. Uh, turnips I direct sow, kohlrabi I'll be direct sowing. And if you want to grow green onions from seed for bunching onions, you can direct sow your onion seed. Um, in the garden in our climate and you'll get green onions. You probably won't get a large bulb size on any of those. So I think that's most of my sort of basic uh, general stuff. Um, that's what I start inside and what I don't and why. 
uh, hopefully that helps you guys out. If there's any specific plant that I didn't mention that you're really um, intent on growing and that you want a little more uh, advice or uh, want to hear if I have any experience on, please post that in the comments down below. Thanks so much for watching. We'll see ya.